This right here is Exa's affordable multi-platform virtual 7.1 surround sound gaming headphones. It's a mouthful, but this is designed for gamers who's on smartphone, portable, handhelds gaming, console gaming, desktop, and even MacBook gaming if if it's your bubble. I'm not judging anyone right here, but this is priced just under 70 USD, making it very competitive with what features it's bound physically. Design-wise, the Star Engine looks to be a better overall design compared to the earlier three XR reviews that I did for your channel. No offense to XR, but currently your design language looks amazing. It looks like your typical aviator headphones with beefy muffles or ear cups, tin bands, coil cables right here. As we look close up right here, the reason why they call it Star Engine is because of the metal frame, mesh metal, the plastic star shape protruding design to the plastic ear cups overall, green color LED thus they call it Star Engine, an indirect tribute to the Star Wars Death Star without the copyright hassle. Now, without the cables attached to the headphone, it weighs 327 grams, a little bit on the hefty side or heavy side, but it's still comfortable to use. Let me explain. Looking at the headbands right here, it's ultra thick right here, thick headbands right here. So it minimizes the pressure on top of your heads. But looking at the ear cups right here, it's equally beefy as well. So looking at the ear cups on close up, on its thinnest point, it has a thickness of 2 cm at its thickest point, 2.5 cm, with an opening of 4.5 cm by 6 cm with a depth of 2.5 cm. One of the thickest and firmest ear cup uh, gaming headphones ear cup that I reviewed so far. Most of them are below 2 cm, but you know, as I just say, let's go crazy and make it thick and thick is always good. Now clamping pressure is good because it's tension based by the metal frames right here. The metal frames on each side extends up to 3 cm with the coil cable also extending out like that. So you guys love the you know twisting test, I'm going to put my thumb aside, stretch it, twist it, there is no rattling or crackling sound occurring at the moment. I can do this, I can stretch it like this. You know. It's built up, built solid. So if you have kids that is, you know, butterfingers or very destructive, this one can take a beating. Now, aside from that, looking at the controls of the headphones, it's located on the back left side of the ear cuts right here. So on the top right here, you have your volume scroll wheel accessible with your, your left thumb right here. This scroll wheel works independently regardless if you're using analog mode at 3.5 millimeter or digital mode with type C. Now on the bottom right here is the mic mute and mic unmute button right here. And on the bottom right here is where in digital mode, you can enable the 7.1 virtual surround sound by a short press or a long press. You can actually off the LED. It takes some time, then the LED turns off, press and hold for some time, and the LED comes back on. Aside from that, there is two ports on the bottom right here. There is the Type-C port right here. I'll show you the Type-C cables in detail later. Aside from that, this is where you insert your microphone right here. So the microphone has like, you have to follow the design, the shape here, so you can align the microphone accordingly. So the microphone right here is good because you can bend it into different shapes and angles. Let me show in detail. So it's good. It retains the direction of the boom mic where you want to turn it to. And also there's a sponge end right here. So it prevents dust and sliver and spitting in case you are rage quitting in game from destructing your microphone. But again, you can always use the microphone bare like so. It's a capsule base and I'll do a microphone test shortly. The package comes included with this soft carrying velvet pouch right here to store your headphones. It's good to have it. A lot of gaming brands are now omitting out. Thank you for including it. This is the main digital Type-C to Type-C cable right here. It's decently length or really long in length, silicon cable right here. Next is your extension cable where you can use the Type-C I showed earlier to Type-A. This is good when your desktop PC is below your desk or far away from your table. It's good to have an extension cable for old legacy Type-A device because now the future is Type-C. So this is another Type-C to 4-pole, 3.5mm ends right here. 4-pole means it supports microphone. 3-pole means it supports no microphone. This one right here is analog mode. So two cables for digital and one cable for analog. In the event you lose your manual, you can always come back to this video, play and pause this section to understand the controls. But again, it's quite user-friendly. 
In the XR software, you can control the type of surround sound for your game, deep bass, FPS, mobile, or XR standard, which I set as standard, but you can also customize them. In terms of basic default mode, that means uh, 7.1 turn off, you can also change the type of EQ that you want. Classic and standard is the wise choice for me. Aside from that, you can also tune your microphone, whether you want to enable the environment noise cancelling if your environment is noisy, but if it's not, you can always toggle off. Pretty much a simple application. On to the microphone test. Currently, we are setting up with the MacBook Pro M1 Pro right here with OBS set at the highest beat rate and gain. Testing 1, 2, 3. Being Fluffy Unicorn, Dancing on Rainbow, she sells seashells on the seashore. This is how I sound like on the Mac ecosystem. On to our second test, currently we are using the Illegal Notebook Windows Base where we can actually use the software to toggle the ENC for the microphone on and off. Currently the ENC is turned off. So testing 1, 2, 3. Being Fluffy Unicorn, Dancing on Rainbow, she sells seashells on the seashore. This is how I sound like without the ENC turned on. The only noise that is coming from the environment is behind me, some road traffic, but maybe you can't hear that, and the air condition. I'm going to turn it on right now. This is with ENC turned on. So testing 1, 2, 3. Pink Fluffy Unicorn, Dancing on Rainbow, she sells seashells on the seashore. So my vocals will be a little bit trim or, you know, compressed. But this way, it will also remove some environmental sound from your background, maybe fan, pads, road traffic, etc. So this is how I sound like with ENC turned on. Let's go back into the main review. Just a heads up, the Virtual 7.1 surround sound only works in USB mode, not in analog mode. Now, it uses a 50mm dynamic driver right here with an impedance of 55 ohms. With such high impedance, the best experience will be in USB mode. To drive the drivers to sound right, you can use the Virtual 7.1 surround sound and the LED. Now, I'm not saying you to avoid analog mode completely. You can use 3.5mm headphone jacks, but you do need to bump the volume higher than natural to make the drivers sound right. Our test is based on the MacBook Pro 14-inch M1 Pro with Type-C, volume set to 6 bar with the volume wheel on the headphone set to maximum right here and surround sound turned off. This is my experience. The bass packs great amount of power with a smooth, long bass vibration drag. The vi vibration is just the... It's just pure eargasm and the boom boom factor really shakes your eardrums. The good news is it does not eat much into the mids but slightly into the highs. What I mean is when it comes to the mids or the vocals, it do sound crystal clear and it's not overpowered much by the bass. It feels balanced in terms of audible level wise. However, when it comes to the highs or the instrumental, it's a crystal clear type with a suitable amount of body or warmth to it. But I feel the bass is a little bit more overpowering the instrumentals and steals the attention away from the highs, typical for a gaming headphones. So the headphones right here perform better in USB mode because you do need the USB to drive the drivers, the LEDs, the virtualization, as well as the electronic noise cancellation for the mic. If you go analog mode, you you do miss out some of the electronic features or the virtualization and you do need to listen at higher volumes. Next is when it comes to the virtual 7.1 surround sound, it works well for its price. It's not the best but it's justifiable for the price. So when it comes to AAA games, I would say the sound effect is widened or deepened so you can enjoy the beats in the music, the bass, the drums as you play Doom Internal all the way to your last boss in hard mode. Or if you are simple first-person shooter games, you can hear gunshot from a distance, directional, so you can you know focus your aim, know where's the enemy position. Footsteps, I would say, is boosted when someone's on top of you or below you. But again, I can't say much because I'm not a truly uh, FAS player because I only play veteran. Apparently, veteran is not a first player game. I'm so sad. You know, I'm not judging, but jokes aside, Eska actually did jump in improvement overall in build quality there is no you know shaky shaky bits it works fine and i hope to see a future version where they make it fully wireless anc and low latency and don't limit their colors to be only one color you know make it argb that would be amazing so would i recommend these headphones versus the other xr reviews that i done earlier in the channel i will give this a shot so thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe. That will get us a higher subscriber count so we can get more products for you to view and we can get fancy products to be reviewed.
Till then, I'll see you guys in the next XR review. But remember to subscribe because I need that subscriber count to go flying above the moon. To the moon, they say. Bye.